Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Champions League is on, and we have our first confirmed Road to the Knockout upgrades for cards coming here very soon in FC24. And these cards are moving on the market. We have to talk a lot about Road to the Knockouts today, and more Centurions cards have been leaked, and it really makes me think that EA is going to move in a certain direction with this upcoming promo. We're going to talk about all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. First of all, let's go over yesterday's content. It was a quiet day, let's be honest, and we're not surprised by that. We saw the post that EA made about what content was going to be this upcoming week. We didn't expect anything massive, and we definitely did not get anything massive. First of all, yesterday we had a player of the month. This was coming. We knew this. Bulka. It is an 83 rated squad with an 85 card. Hard. It is very cheap. I don't think too many people are going to go after this SBC unless you're running a League One side, and then it could be an okay card for you, or if you just have 83s in the club, which I think a lot of us maybe don't have as many anymore since they've been dropping a lot of those cheaper SBCs like the Team League player pick. I know my club is lacking more 83s and 84s than it was before, and actually those prices are going a bit up on the market because of more SBCs that require those players. The big SB SBC yesterday was the 84 plus double, and I say it's the big SBC. It actually caused the biggest market impact, which wasn't that much. Only 13% upvoted. In reality, guys, this is a gamble pack that is very expensive. I did them both yesterday. In both packs, I got an 85 rated and an 84 rated, but it is a pack that if you have some coins and if you want to send it, you can because it gives you the best chance at packing a Trailblazers Team 2 player. Like, I wanted to try and see if I could pack Kane. I wanted to send it to see if I could pack any of these cards. The guys, these cards almost seem virtually unpackable. It's ridiculous. Maybe, maybe you hit a Ward Prowse or maybe you hit a Kubo or a Brant since they're super cheap. But even the discard, guys, I haven't packed a single one of either of these last two weeks of promo cards. Granted, I'm not opening a ton of packs, but Rivals, Weekend League Rewards, but at least a handful of upgrade packs. Now this 84 double. This is the best chance we have at packing one of those, but it's just crazy how the pack would is for these cards. It seems almost non-existent. This did move SBC fodder, though. A part of the fodder market that haven't hasn't really moved that much. I mean, 83s actually moved from discard. They were like a thousand coins, guys. They've been discard all year. They moved up a little bit. 84s are 2,000 coins a piece, and 85s are 7.5k. It's the 84s and the 85s that are moving the most because it does require an 84 rated squad with one 85 rated player inside of it, which is not good value, but you can tell it's a gamble SBC that a lot of people at least want to try out. Now, how is fodder going to move today, right? These cards have just kind of continually rose into the nighttime, these 84s and 85s, they could go up a little bit today, but really it just comes down to, is EA going to drop the 50k packs again today on Wednesday, like they have been doing the past couple of weeks with a brand new team of the week? If you have 84s or 85s that you bought yesterday at content, I would try to lazy sell them before the content drop today, and that way you can get them out and not have to worry about the supply that could be coming in. I would imagine that this fodder could rise up a little bit more though, as the 84 double does refresh, and a lot of people are going to be taking that opportunity to try and build that pack again twice today. That's the big part about it, right? That's why I think fodder is probably gonna rise a bit more in that lower rated department, because you can do it again today two more times, and that's just, again, our best chance at packing these almost unpackable trailblazers at the moment. But if you don't have a lot of coins or fodder, I would probably stay away from doing it because that is just an SBC that is not that good of value in the long run. Now, let's talk about the bigger stuff that was going on yesterday and a lot about road to the knockouts. Guys, RTTKs, we have our first upgrades confirmed because there were a couple teams that won yesterday, namely Real Madrid and Bayern Munich being the biggest clubs that won. We are getting upgrades to these cards, guys, because they have clinched that two-win Threshold and honestly, as you see, Modric here is right around 350 360,000 coins. I haven't bought any of these cards because, honestly, in my opinion, they have not dropped off enough for me to want to buy them. But Modric has locked in his upgrade, guys, because once again, EA said that by September 29th, all the cards, even if they were released after September 29th, the games that were played from that date on counted for upgrades. So, this is the second win for Madrid, second win for Bayern. These cards are going to be getting a plus one this Friday. Not entirely sure what time of day those upgrades are going to be. There's actually four cards that are locked in right now. Lamer, Modric, Andre Silva from Sociedad, and Darmian the Objective. So one SBC, one Objective, and then two cards in 
packs. Those, those upgrades, once again, are going to happen on Friday. Now, as I mentioned, the prices of these cards aren't really down that much. Modric is 350, 360, right? I and mean, if you look at Modric's graph from yesterday, he started at 370,000 coins. Everybody was selling into the hype. He went down to 340. He rose up before the game, went down during the game again as people were selling after Madrid scored a couple of goals, he was down to about 330, 340 at his lowest point, and people realized, like, okay, this card's getting a plus one, and they actually started to buy it back up. And while there has been some people still listing the card, normally, as we've mentioned, we see these cards drop after a game, I think what's a little bit different about this time is people realize that this Modric is so hyped, they still think he's undervalued, he's getting an upgrade confirmed to a 92, and guys, the content's been pretty quiet and the market in general has been very, very quiet. So I think that actually makes people more apt to either not sell the Modric that they have or go buy a Modric to potentially see the price rise towards the end of the week. And I think that's why we didn't see really as big of price drop-offs as we thought we were going to see. Because last time after these games were played, we saw some pretty sizable price drop-offs. And that's something that we normally do see, even if the player's team wins. But I think it was just a perfect storm yesterday of, of non-tent, basically. And this card being, I mean, so hyped for an upgrade that he, he started to go down as, like, the game was going on. I think I even tweeted out yesterday that Modric was starting to go down after Madrid scored their second goal. Then they were winning. It was looking good. He was down to, like, 330, 340. And then all of a sudden, he started to go back up as people were buying the card because the upgrade was seemingly locked in. Almost the same thing with Lamer as well. He dropped a little bit after the game. But really, the, the drops yesterday were a lot smaller than we thought they were going to be, right? He went from 260 down to 240, went back up before the game, and then, of course, after the game was down at around 240,000 coins, and right now, he's starting to go back up a little bit. So here's what I'm thinking on Limer and Modric. I'm not investing in them, guys, because the prices for them have not moved enough downwards for me to want to get invested. As we wake up today and as you're watching this video early on Wednesday, there could be some more fluctuations. There could be like, like we saw yesterday, there could be another one of these. Maybe a little bit of a drop off as the people who were trying to sell yesterday didn't get their sales. If this does happen again, I would look for a bottom, a valley, and I would definitely see a rise. At. If Lamer goes down below 240, if he goes into 230s, if Modric goes to like 340 to 350 flat, like anywhere in the 340s, I don't think they're going to drop that much, but they could start to slowly rise from now until Friday just because the market is really not doing a lot. And I know that's a risk that maybe some of you guys want to take. I personally am not going to be buying any of these cards right now just because I want to wait and see what happens today with more Road to the Knockout games that are going to be played. Now, for a lot of the other cards that are in packs right now that did play games, the only one that's down a lot is Di Maria because Benfica lost. Di Maria has 44,000 coins after being 60k. And I mean, honestly, yesterday was boring in a sense of not that the games were boring, but the outcomes were all the predicted outcomes, like all the favorites won, right? United won, saving the penalty at the end, Onana and Maguire with the goal, right? All of the favorites seemingly won yesterday, Arsenal won, Napoli, Real Madrid. So there weren't any surprises. So Benfica and Di Maria were kind of the only like card that really dropped off a lot. Even Galatasaray losing, Mertens is still 25,000 coins. He didn't drop off that much. Osimhen's down a little, almost the same price. Bruno Fernandez is down a little, but almost the same price. A lot of the other cards that you see for RTTKs like Openda and maybe Kalulu, who does play today, they're down a little bit, but it's more so just like we saw earlier yesterday. Like perfect example here is Lewandowski. This is just people that started to sell the card from the peak of hype before everybody started to sell to in the hype, right? Think about this. This is why I said last night and two nights ago to sell maybe like Monday night into Tuesday morning because that's when I thought the card prices were going to be peaked and they were, right? Lewa was 540. He was down at around 513,000 coins. Right now he's 520k, but you know, if they somehow get upset today, he is going to drop down a lot in price. So there's still a very good I think it's very sound to sell into the hype as always, but if you want to risk it, I mean, man, the market right now does look like it's okay to risk it in if there was ever a time to do that um, just because of the way things are going. But you don't want to get caught on the wrong end of a player like Di Maria who dropped off a lot yesterday. So watch out for Modric and Lamer specifically, and then whoever is playing today. Like, I have my eyes on Kalulu. If they can pull off an insane upset today, 
this guy's going to absolutely fly because nobody believes in Milan right now. Group of death, you know, it's not looking good. But if they're able to pull off an upset, that gives his card opportunity for an upgrade. He's a French center back with Milan links. Like, this is a great card. So I've got my eyes on him, hoping that something maybe magical can happen today there. Sorry if you're a PSG fan. Uh, but in that case, like, Usman Dembele would drop off a bunch, right? Or if they lose today... Then Kalulu's probably going to drop off a little bit, but I don't think he would drop off a ton because he's still a great card for that price and still technically live. He has, you know, three more games after this match week to potentially get an upgrade. And I think that's maybe why some of the other cards didn't move as much yesterday as well. But I really do, I really do think it has to do with the content right now being as just mid as it is. A lot of people don't feel like they have to sell these cards and get coins to go to other stuff. They can just hold on to them because they're like, well, they're not going to lose value right now. Like, what is there to panic sell for? So that's kind of the state of the road of the knockouts market. General uh, advice still is to sell on the hype and be careful trading with them because there will be a lot of movements. I didn't buy a single road of the knockout yesterday. I'm more so stuck to icons and to heroes. And for the market in general, that's what I would tell you guys to do as well. One trade, I don't know if you remember, in last night's video, I saw Kingsley Coman at 194,000 coins, and I was surprised. I was like, wow, that is a very, very high price for him. Some of these out-of-packs in forums just keep going up little by little. I actually, yesterday, picked up um, four Kingsley Comans on his fluctuation downwards. I don't know why he was doing this yesterday, but I saw him at 194 last night, like right here on the YouTube video. And then right before content, he was down all the way at 180, and I was like, wait a second. He was just 194 earlier today. If content today is very bad or mid, which I expected it to be, he's going to go right back up, right? So I picked up four of these for 177 and below. He's gone all the way back to 195. But what I'm realizing with this is, I mean, we've got some French cards and Bundesliga cards coming in the team of the week today, which we'll talk about that leak in a second. And he is mad rare. So I think I'm going to hold on to this card for a little bit longer, especially as the market is just kind of in limbo mode and... It feels like we're just waiting for centurions at this point with the way the market is feeling and the way content is feeling. I'm going to hold on to that card for right now, but that's what, just what I would tell you guys to do at the moment is look at the out-of-packs cards like Sterling. 66k for Sterling is a price that seems to be up for him, right? But yesterday at one point, he was all the way down here at 61. Probably would have been able to get him at 60k. If Sterling goes down to like 60k again today, snipe it, man. Get in on those. And he'll probably go back up to 65 or 66,000 coins on a fluctuation. And you can trade with that card. So watch those out of packs in forms for sure. They're fluctuating really well. Uh, and even Trailblazers, I guess. Trailblazers, I'm a little bit skeptical about. Uh, Salah had a good movement yesterday. Griezmann was panic sold and it bounced back. But Mikatarian, Ruben Diaz, and De Lorenzo, they just seem to be trending downwards and not upwards. Same thing with Gaia and even Matoma. So I'm kind of staying away from the Trailblazers right now. I just don't know if there's enough hype for them um, and if people are buying those cards. But icons and heroes continue to fluctuate really well. So if you're trading, I would trade with those. Now, let's get to the big info, the Centurions. Guys, I have a couple thoughts about Centurions. I know we're still, you know, two days away. I'm hoping that we get a loading screen today. But as we got some more leaks yesterday, and as Foot Sheriff and some of the other guys started tweeting out these names that are in this promo, what it feels like to me is with all these big name icons that keep getting leaked, I think this is going to look a lot like Trophy Titans back in FIFA 23. Guys, I think we're going to be getting the return of the Lil Bro icons. Not for all of these cards, like they could drop a Wayne Rooney like this that is higher rated than his base version in the game. They wouldn't have to drop a little bro Rooney because 700k is not that expensive. But some of the other icons that were leaked yesterday, like Charlton, RIP, right? Of course, just recently in the news for passing away, unfortunately. But I think this would be an incredible opportunity if EA released a Charlton card that was lower rated than his 92 icon. Let's say it's like an 89 Charlton. Yes, it's going to be a little bit lower in stats, but this would give you an affordable option to go and pick up off the market. Let's say he's like 500K because he's going to be a lot more packable, a lot cheaper, still maybe have the same play style. I hope they don't take that away. Hopefully they don't reduce the skill moves, the weak foot. But I mean, I just think there's potential here for EA to, re to release some cheaper icons and to get us excited about icons in that regard. So I hope it's not just... All of these icons have higher rated versions than their card that's already on the market. I kind of hope that either they do one higher and one lower or some higher and some lower. I hope they mix it up just because I think some affordable icons right now that are new ones that are uh, promo cards that would be semi-packable. That would shake up the market a lot and that would at least make, that would make me want to 
buy those cards and try them out because right now I can't buy Charlton. I, if I sold everything, I'd maybe have enough coins to buy them, right? And, you know, I would rather try out a cheaper one. And a lot of us can't afford 2 million coin cards at this stage of the game. So that's my hunch is that EA is going to be releasing these icons with uh, lower ratings like they mentioned in the pitch notes. But we'll have to see. We don't have official word on that yet. We did get a couple SBC leaks yesterday. The first one being Odegaard. And guys, I think this is going to be either a Friday or a Saturday. Or like it's, it's two SBC players that are leaked right now. And both of them are big enough names to be released on a Friday. I think Odegaard might be our Friday SBC. And the real thing here is EA needs to give him a three-star weak foot or above. I mean, even a three-star weak foot would be a little bit mid. He's got a five-star skills um, boost on the card, of course. His base version, five-star skills. It's always the weak foot that's a problem, but he's got great play styles. I'd be so curious to see what they do with him for Centurions. If they give him 80 pace and a three-star weak foot and make him semi-decent, this could be a really, really good SBC, right? I just did the Declan Rice. A lot of people did that card. Um, you've got a promo card for Sokka. you got a promo card. Or not too many promo cards uh, from Arsenal, but a lot of gold cards like Sokka people use, Ramsdale people use, Saliba, very popular card. A lot of Prem teams as well, links to Holland, links to uh, Risa, right? Links to um, Ole. So there's a lot of good links. I would really watch this Risa card if he, uh, if the SBC for Odegaard is good value. It's kind of investing very, very early. I wouldn't say I would invest in Risa right now, I would just keep it on his price. He is up a little bit. He was 130K. This SBC leak came out. He jumped to 140. Right now, he's still 138 to 140. So just be careful and watch that. But that's a big name SBC. And that has potential, in my opinion. Now, a couple more Centurions links we have, or leaks. We have Tomori, one of my favorite cards to trade with each and every day. That's going to be a really, really nuts card as well. Up to Tamori, and this is maybe one reason to stay away from Kalulu a little bit, but that's going to be an absolutely mental promo card. Think about it. Ferland Mendy, Tamori, Rashford, and then, of course, we did have another big name center back leaked, Thiago Silva. So another Prem center back is going to be coming into the fold. Um, hopefully they give him 73 pace or more. That would be great. Um, he's probably going to be pretty decent in the game. He's got the Anticipate Playstyle Plus on his base gold card. Hopefully they keep that for the Centurions. That's a card you get excited about, in my opinion. He always plays pretty well. Ashley Cole is getting a Centurions icon. That would be one that wouldn't have to get a little bro version, right? Because that would just be so packable because his card is already one of the cheaper icons that was going to be in this promo, it seems. So make the Ashley Cole higher rated like that prediction. Eusebio is in this team as well. A great one that they could release a, a mini version for. And then also, I do believe that Romania, FIFA Trading Romania, tweeted out a big SBC leak for Mudrik. So it's Mudrik and it's Odegaard right now as the SBC leaks. And I mean, this could be really good, right? I don't know what this is for. We were having some fun joking about it on the stream yesterday because the whole Centurions promo vibe, right, is about... 100 something right 100 games 100 uh, goals or assists and we're like wait has mudrick played 100 games definitely not for chelsea some people were joking that it's 100 million how much they paid for him so that's why he's getting a centurions card sorry chelsea fans i had to it was too funny but you know i don't know what the quiet criteria is for centurions this year if ea is changing it up if they're doing anything different but uh, he is a leaked card that is coming in the centurions promo as an sbc so that's one to watch out for again with some of those links as well in the premier league and then let's go let's let's turn it to today with leaks is since we're on this topic this is the team of the week six all right uh griezmann goretzka frimpong openda bundesliga heavy Politano was in there as well it looks like another mid team of the week besides griezmann and frimpong like there's some nice cards in here but like just another okay team of the week, let's be completely honest. Maybe a little bit better than last week because you got some middle-level usable cards in there. Uh, but no Salah, no Oshawala, or um, I think Guiharo. A lot of people were hoping that she would get it in for him. And nothing for either of those players. So it looks like an okay team of the week today, but not anything super great. And I just wonder if that's going to set the tone for content today as well, right? Remember the post that EA made about the content that we're expecting this week. We have a couple outstanding SBCs. Stoichkov, um, getting the pronunciation there, right? Stoichkov, right? The CH, got to pronounce that. I learned that yesterday. Stoichkov, right? Still looking out for his icon player SBC. It's between Stoichkov today and tomorrow also with Foyth. So we're either going to get Foyth today or tomorrow or Stoichkov today or tomorrow, I believe, because Foyth is leaked as the final 
last and final Trailblazers player SBC, which this one could have some potential as well. He can play center back, right back, and CDM. Just depends on the boost they give the card and the play style because he already has some really good defending play styles. So that would be a card you could keep an eye on as well for a potential uh, piece of content today. And one thing we didn't see as a part of this was evolutions, okay? We didn't see evolutions as part of this. And I'm hoping that this is maybe they didn't want to show us or tell us about it. I mean, in here, it says upgrade SBC, but they didn't say like 84 times to upgrade, right? Or they didn't say player pick SBC was coming. So I have a little bit of hope, just a little, just a tiny bit, like just that much, that there will be a new evolution today because we do have the Pacey Winger and the Trail, or sorry, and the Bruiser Wingback are going to be expiring today at content. And we would be left with just the two Interceptor and Trailblazer Slide Tackler Evos at this time. I hope, I hope that we get something new today, but I'm not expectant of that. And then the other thing that I would expect to see today would be potentially a loading screen. So again, it just seems a little quiet right now in this game, but it's a good opportunity to get your Rivals games in. If you're grinding through the cup, if you're going through that, uh, get those games done because I really just feels like maybe later today or maybe really it's tomorrow on Thursday things will spice up a little bit because every time we get to Thursday right it's the day before the new promo and you know Wednesdays we you do often get the store packs I'm gonna open my preview pack here really quick we got a USA left wait whoa this could be good okay I don't think that's good but um Wednesdays Besides the packs in the store, I usually are a little bit mid, so we'll see if EA spice it up at all today, but I'm not expecting much. If you see cards that drop a lot before content, like icons, like the, the Coman, those rare out-of-pack specials that I saw yesterday, I actually just picked up right now on a fluctuation trade, a Cancelo. Cancelo inform was like 185 for like most of the day yesterday, and I just logged on to Flippin, and I saw him, he was 178. Bro, 170, dude, he was 187 yesterday. Like, this is a rare out of packs card we have a pedri that is coming in this team as well i will buy that all day long so just spend a little bit of time on the market i know it's grindy right it's grindy to check prices to learn prices but you can see like i'll probably be able to sell this cancelo for that 187 price so that's what i would do right now is work the market a little bit if you've got the motivation to do it because prices on like icons and the rare cards just kind of continue to rise because content's just okay but you can trade with that and you can make some coins off of that but maybe things will be shaken up a little bit today we'll find out of course live on the twitch stream if you're not watching daily in there make sure you drop a follow on that link we're live just about every single day six days a week for the content drop watching the new content that comes out reacting to it looking at what we get and playing games and working the market of course live on stream so if you enjoyed the video today drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and of course subscribe if you're new i'll see you guys in stream today and for a video tomorrow as always it's been made for the count see you guys there peace